everybody. Do you hear me correctly? Perfect. Amazing. So this morning, I will talk to you about women in tech, and I want us to go beyond the trend. Uh, my name is Marcy Aika Charolois. So let's start all together. This is the structure of change. So this is our agenda for about 40 to 50 minutes. First of all, I'm going to do a short presentation and why inclusion is not that a trend, because probably you think that it's a trendy thing, and I want us to go beyond it. Um, I will show you some data and statistics in order to prove that there is absolutely not a trend at all about this topic. And on the third part, let's be positive by creating our own set of tools of actions. And of course, I will give you some insights. So presentation, who am I and why am I talking to you about this? So I told you that before, my name is Marcie Rica Charolois. You can pronounce it with whatever accent you want. I am a content strategist in recruitment and social tech. I work as a freelance uh, with my own company called Merci Marcy, which is actually a joke. Um, I've been working with La Grande École du Numérique, which is an organization uh, of the government. And uh, I try to promote how diversity in general and inclusion can be something good when it comes to tech. I worked with Mabonfe, which is actually a startup that promotes how work-life balance can be something really good and really important when it comes to inequalities in the family. And by inequalities, I'm talking about uh, gender inequalities. I work with Muzo. Muzo is a um, platform of uh, IT recruitment, and I will be in several months the head of communication and marketing at 15 Tech. And 50 intake, I don't know if you know that, but we aim for a 50% representation of women in tech by 2050. What a challenge, of course, because the rate of women in tech is slowly decreasing, but significantly. We were last year about 30% to 28% of women in tech in general, I mean uh, technical and not technical profiles. Right now we are decreasing, we are about 28 to 26. And when it comes to developers, for example, the rate is decreasing too. Sadly, uh, we were about 15 to 10% of technical profile like developers last year. Right now, we are about 10 to 8.5%. So I want us to focus on a more, uh, a more significant and personal experience that will explain the dynamic behind that. So I worked for two years at Wheel of Devs, which is an IT and media recruitment platform that wants to highlight how happy the devs are. So, my personal experience, I was the first woman recruited in the team. As you can see, I am mixed race, and you do not see, you do not see that, but I am also LGBTQI+. So I was the first woman with a lot of intersectionality. We were two women at that time, but I can tell you right now that I didn't have the same experience as my colleague. Absolutely not. I was not fitting the same shape and pattern, but that was my strength because I was in charge of communication and I wanted to promote more diversity. So I went from communication officer to editor in chief. What a challenge too. My missions at that time as an editor in chief in tech was, were actually topics. Who will write on Wheel of Devs? Who represent the audience? What should I talk about? Only technical topics, what about the social schedule? When should I promote technical articles? Do I have to think about main events like Devox, PHP Forum, etc.? And how do I promote that? And to who? So I was promoting all the articles and everything I was doing on the, um, the line by ads on social medias. Then I realized that my keywords were targeting an identical group, men of 20 to 45 years old, from the same scholarship and interests. So as you can see, even if I am a woman, I was totally biased, and I was liking a very heterogeneous group made of women and diversity in general. 
Yeah, a little bit Clooney. I disqualified my own feminist and inclusion commitment by being with men. So, think about your environment and the impact of your environment. Even if I am, and I was at the time, the first mixed-race woman in charge of communication of an IT recruitment media, I was seriously biased. And it can be your case. But how does that come? It's because of what we call the habitus. And the habitus is where the biases grow. So, l'habitus is actually a concept made by a French sociologist called Pierre Bourdieu. And habitus is a system of preferences, a lifestyle specific to each person that influences the daily practices of individuals. And these predispositions are internalized unconsciously as the individual adapts and integrates into a social environment. And I was experiencing that. But let's have the great recipe of the habitus. So how does that work? The base, the basic one. First of all, your family. You've been um, raised by your family, a system of values, um, an organization, of course. Uh, second step, school. School also is a strong element of what is going on about the habitus and the way you're going to be biased. Those ingredients will have a powerful impact of the way you're going to move your body and the way you will behave the way you're going to be in your environment. Do you take space? Are you small? Of course, you can imagine that the gender can have a strong impact also on that. And the language, the way you're going to speak, the level of your language, do you use slang, do you use, do you use uh, not slang? What are the results of that? All those elements. You know what? We are human and we don't want to die. This is something that might be not clear, but we want to survive. So to survive, we are just trying to bond with some people that are sharing the similar values that we have. And all of these are, of course, shaped because of the family, school, and the body behavior languages. But the result is re really clear. We will be part of a homogeneous school uh, group with similar values, similar clothes. Also, you can look at uh, your neighbor and see if he or she is wearing a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, not a tie. Nobody is wearing a tie, I think. Um, so yeah, of course, you will be shaped by that. And similar facial expressions, because it's way easier to communicate that way. What is the consequence? This creates a majority group. Who becomes the decision maker, of course? And you can be totally biased in this, this group. When I say majority group, of course, uh, you will experience some bias, just like confirmation bias. You will try to confirm everything you have been told. For example, you are in the process of recruitment. Uh, the candidate uh, you heard about is, uh, hypothetically, uh, good at Scala. I don't know. Let's talk about that. You will just seeking reassurance of what you've been told. And that's quite normal. That's the way your brain is going to be tricked all the time. But be aware about uh, the confirmation biases that you will experience, for instance. And another bias which is actually really important about the group dynamic, sympathy and antipathy bias. Probably you've been experiencing that. Uh, you are in a group and you don't think the same as the group, but you feel pressured by the group. Someone new is coming and, I don't know, let's say the majority of the group is saying that, they, don't, they do not like the one in front of you. You can be so pressured to fit in that you'll say that you do not feel good about this one too, even if it was not your point of view, first of all. So by, creating, by being on the top of that power scale, I would like you to understand that you are a decision maker if you're part of a group uh, that will have power. And that power is sadly leading to something that is so common, this is the status quo. What is that? We are uh, so part of a group and we do not want change, we want to be with friends, with colleagues, we want to be all together and we want to uh, let people fit or not fit in. What is the status quo? In a sociological sense, the status quo refers to the current state of social structures or values and in reality, it has a really strong impact to results as uh, are coming from the status quo, it includes 
or it includes. And if it's not inclusive, so this is the topic of today, it faces oppositions, even revolution. Maybe you've seen that so many women are just speaking up for themselves right now. They are just trying to make something so new and never seen before that is, it can be seen as a revolution. So let's say Cocorico, something really French about the revolution. Um, but I've got to tell you something, soft or rough, uh, it's up to us to leave it. Seriously, right now in 2022, we are in such a really strong dynamic about uh, women empowerment that I don't think that we can avoid that and uh, it works also in tech. But who wants the revolution? Let's say minorities wants to want to be included minorities in general. And to do so, you should think about intersectionality. Being a woman in 2022 is what I can call being a layered woman with specific needs. And it's not less true in tech. For example, I told you before that I didn't have the same experience as my colleague, tall, blonde, blue-eyed girl, heterosexual, and we didn't have the same path at all. But that's okay. I mean, I, I do not blame her. That it's just um, the result of intersectionality. And I, I let you imagine how different uh, the career path can be for a white or black girl, a transgender or cisgender girl, a mom or a single woman, a Muslim woman who covers her head, for example, a Jewish woman. Uh, a woman who is struggling with some disability. So we have to think with a bigger picture. And seriously, I think that it works in society in general, but it is not less true in tech. Who made that concept? Intersectionality was um, summed up by Kimberly Crenshaw. She is actually a critical race theorist. She's a black feminist, and she works with um, concepts like race, racism, law. And uh, her work has been really foundational in critical race theory and intersectionality. Sorry, this word is a little bit complicated to pronounce. And she wanted to prove and enhance how uh, gender and racial uh, system can be a prejudice to women. If you want to take a picture of what is called uh, the um, intersectionality, this is what uh, is summing up all the concepts of Kimberly Crenshaw. This wheel of power is made by Sylvia Dogworth that you can see just here. Um, and it's quite important to understand that everything is so layered and everything is uh, made by ranges that you will be somewhere on the map. This is a total map of what you can be, uh, only by existing. Let's play a game all together. You know what? Uh, as you can see, if you are in the center, you will have power. You will have power, we will have privileges, but you can be a decision maker, mainly if you're part of a majority group that can make, can make decisions. If you are in the second range, you are in the middle, but you can be um, the voice or the, of the more marginalized at the last range. I would like you to raise your hand if you are on the spectrum of skin color, white. Most of you. I would like you to raise your hand if you've got your citizenship. I mean by that you are not struggling with undocumented statu status. Okay, from your own country, of course, not here specifically. Raise your hand if you are a cisgender man. Not that the majority think we are about a 60-40. Good. Uh, raise your hand if you speak English fluently. Okay. Raise your hand if you can be considered as rich. By rich, I mean you can. Uh, you are not struggling with your bills at the end of the month and you can pay whatever you want. Okay. Okay. Um, on the range of housing, uh, do you own your own property? I mean, by that you're not renting. Okay. On the range of body size, are you perceived as slim? I mean, by that you fit the standards. You're not struggling with clothes in general. Okay. 
uh, about your mental health, do you consider yourself as robust? I mean, by that you're not mostly stable. <laughs> Funny thing. <laughs> Maybe we should talk all together and make a round on it. <laughs> Um, and be honest about our mental health. Um, about neurodiversity, do you um, think you be you can be considered as neurotypical? Okay, that's quite normal if uh, it's not the majority. Uh, I mean, by that you are not uh, considered as neurodivergent. You do you do not struggle with TDAH, for example. Or, okay, <laughs> is that okay? Perfect, thank you. Uh, I don't want to make anyone having a coming out right now, but uh, <laughs> if you are heterosexual, you can raise your hand and if you feel comfortable about talking of your sexuality status, okay. And about ability, are you able-bodied? By that I'm saying that you're not struggling with some disability that cannot be seen. Okay, and on the last range about formal education, are you um, having a diploma from post-secondary school? Perfect, so you know what? You are in a position of power and privileges so you can make the change. You are part of the top of scale. I would like you to imagine that uh, wheel of power in another dimension, okay, so the third and last range could be on the low part of it. And we're going just like on the top of the mountain, so you're on the top. This is a good news. You can do something better to change inclusion and inclusivity in general. Let's have a look on my own map. So I wanted to be really honest about <laughs> what happened to me. So as you can see, I am not that in the center. So that's why, when I just uh, knew this tool, I understood why I was so struggling in tech and how the communication was so difficult sometimes with people in the middle and people in the back of the room. But the thing is, right now, by being in the middle, I can speak up for the more marginalized, just like I'm doing right now. I can, I can also bond with uh, people in position of power and we can make great changes together. So, revolution, change. Do you want to be part of it? This is a legitimate question. And I can tell you that if you are in a position where you don't know what to do, that's okay. I would like to highlight to you what is the resistance of change and how does that work? A really quick equation. There is a very normal and common attitude towards change. 15%, 70%, and 15%. It always works like that uh, in the most of the cases. So 15% of people can be represented almost impossible to convince. Do you think you are part of it about inclusion and making changes? You can raise your hand if you do not feel comfortable about making change or you think that it's a little bit too late or Okay, so you're all part of the change, or maybe you don't know. 70% of people are having a neutral position, so they're just thinking of if they will stick on the line or will be part of change. Are you there? That's okay. <laughs> Honestly, that's quite normal. Okay, and 15% of volunteers, the allies, and the people who are willing and ready to move the status quo. Are you part of it? Quite the majority. That's great. So I would like you to um, think about that. So if you are in the 15% here, you can have a huge impact of the 70% of neutral positions. So as I told you before, you are kind of a decision maker and change maker, just like I do on a daily basis. So yeah, let's talk a little bit more about that as an insights. Wherever you are on that scale, you probably thought I have nothing against feminism, but women complain a lot about their situation. Did you think that once in your life? I've been thinking of <laughs> like that, to be honest, because I didn't get how powerful, uh, you know, the situa situation of changes can be. Okay, so everybody's been a little bit more honest. Aren't they a bit hysterical? 
sometimes that's what we can call a cliche, but I'm facing that sentence a lot uh, when I am um, dealing with my clients, for example. Second thought, I have trouble with women who are not gentle, patient, kind, polite, etc. All the adjectives that can be perceived as womanly. Did you think of that once in your life? Yeah. Yeah, of course, but it's not perceived as um, adjectives for men. I mean, you, you do not use commonly, I'm saying commonly, uh, gentle, passion, kind, polite, all those adjectives. I mean, about guys, it's more about being strong, being efficient. Uh, you know, I, you can have a different point of view, but this is what, what is going on. I will uh, take the question at the end, because otherwise I will not <laughs> finish my presentation. But let's debate. That's interesting. Um, so another thinking that, like uh, the comparison effect, why X is less efficient than Z, for example. You, so you can have those thoughts, and that's totally OK. But let me tell you some stats that might change your vision. So all the those data are coming from the study called What is Holding Back Women in Tech? It's been published on um, October 2021. It's made by Ipsos. And on 100% of the obstacle uh, to progress in tech, 30% of barrier, sorry, result from group oppression and sexist biases. So I don't know if you are a woman, you can raise your hand if you ever feel that way. Okay, and if you are a man, if you've been struggling with sexist behaviors, for example, that works too. Okay, interesting. I've been dealing with that, to be honest. When I came in tech, I've been experiencing really <laughs> difficult moments with sexist um, behaviors in general. 52% of women think their gender or gender expression is or will be a problem at some point in their career. As a woman, did you ever feel that? I've been feeling that. Only because, I don't know if it's your case or yours, but by being probably a mother one day, I thought that it would be uh, a serious barrier in, the, in my career path. Something really interesting about recruitment and job ads. The legitimacy failed to apply. Women versus men. So, women think that the minimum skills um, quoted uh, to be uh, to feel legitimate to apply is about 90% of all the requirements. If you do not feel, uh, let's say, 90%, you don't feel legitimate to apply. You're just hesitating and you don't know if you can do all the stuff that can be required in your job title or job position or daily basis and um, tasks. And by that, this is very important. Um, they would like to quote the 90% of the list to foresee a serene future when taking up a position. Compared with men, only 60% are required mentally to feel okay to apply. So all of these are just made by gender and all the adjectives that we're talking about. Um, and all the behaviors and biased um, behavior that we can have all together. Did you ever feel in that position, if you are a woman, that you want to quote the maximum of the requirements? Okay. Impressive. 70% of women think that internal monitoring is a reason for attraction and retention. Did you feel that as a man? Did you see that when you were mentoring women, for example, or doing uh, that kind of actions? Yes, what is internal Someone wanted to <laughs> answer. It's just behind you on the right. 
you can say your answer out loud, out loud if you want. No? Okay, so internal mentoring, I mean, by that you are a manager, for example, and you want to mentor a woman that can be junior, and uh, you're just setting a lot of trainings, internal trainings, in order to promote her career path. Okay? Is that clear? I think so, yeah. Okay. Photo said, probably you've been there too. I want to help, but I don't know where to start. But that's really common. You can raise your hand if you, <laughs> you, they, you are here. Okay, so I will show you some insights. Uh, we want to implement actions, but are they good? Of course, and we need role models. Okay, the hands are rising up. So more insights to attract and keep women in tech. Taking actions. You know what? The title was Attracting and Retaining Women Beyond the Trend because I want us to go beyond it and I want you to have more actions uh, in order to improve the situation of the decreasing of women in tech. If you are a man or if you are a woman, sometimes it can happen, minimize interruptions during speaking. The women are more likely to be twice interrupted when they are speaking about their tasks, for example. Listen to the needs of your employees and accommodate them. I know that sounds a little bit, I don't know, that obvious, but a good health insurance, um, a support of, parent, of parentality in general, all these kind of actions can bring such a well-being environment and a work-life balance that can change everything, just like accommodate the agenda, for example. Be clear by doing it. Pay transparency. What is go going on with the salary? You know, there is something so difficult when you understand that you are paid less uh, comparing with your male colleague, and you see that, I don't know, in a really... Um, random discussion that you are paid less. This is so unfair and you do not feel motivated and for the most of the time we will quit your team. I would like you to have more so transparency about uh, job developments with the first system. So what is the career path? What are the different steps when it comes to a junior woman, for example, where you can be senior, what is going on there? I don't know if you do that with your company or your team. If you do that, you can raise your hand. Okay, that's really cool because there, are, there is a lack of it in France, to be honest. And I am struggling with my customers all the time by saying that transparency is the key. Off time and team time that do not rely on bro culture. Pizza, beers. That's cool. I mean, you, you can be a woman and fit in, but why? Why not any changes? For example, I was having a testimonial of a, <laughs> of a developer, uh, a female developer, and she told me, I don't know why my colleagues do not want to be, I don't know, having a spa there, for example, because we deserve it, you know? We've been working really hard, and I think that a massage could be something really cool, and I don't want to be there having a pizza and a beer. And I was like, okay. That <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> I think that you're feeling it and you're living it. So why not change? Do not uh, only rely on bro culture. Do something different, like hiking, climbing, whatever you want, but not only the easy thing. Push it until you make it. Help women speaking up if they're interrupted or if they are not um, able to talk correctly, feeling shy or having um, a lack of self-confidence when it comes to their careers and what they're doing on the daily basis. This is so typical. Sometimes you are, you're just so, you know, you've been told to be shy and be polite and do not raise your voice as a woman. So you do not speak about what you're doing and uh, sometimes also the manager do not know what is going on with the female of the team. Push it until you make it by investing financially in their own permanent actions, like trainings. I'll tell you that before, but that's really important. Boot camps, that can be something that can seriously help women to stay in your team and stay in tech. Of course, you can also push women to be role model, but because she's competent and not because she's the woman of duty. 
that is really important because I've seen so many females that have been used on ads, for example, or recruitment ads, and I'm just like, oh my God, what is seriously going on? They just want to put this woman in front of the photographer in order to say, yes, we've got women, our job is done. But that's really <laughs> difficult to leave that, to be honest. Put forward at any time, concrete action for the retention of women in your team. So internships, training, and of course, um, many things like that, just like, I don't know, participate to a podcast, for example. If there is technical articles written in your company, why do not call for women? I'm sure they're doing really good stuff, but maybe they're just shy enough to do not promote their own uh, task and what they're doing. So yeah, you can call for women in concrete actions like podcast um, article and technical articles in your blog, for example. Testimonials of women who are increasing their skills. Why not promote their career? Why not promote what they are doing in order to attract more women? If you feel seen and you feel considered because there is a woman in your team, you know, uh, just having a role model, but of course not on duty, uh, you can be sure that it will increase uh, to 50% uh, the way that women could apply to your company. So that's really significant. And of course, if you want to have um, more women into your team, you can also put forward on job announce or your blog on the pay people page of your website, for example, your management style and your recruitment process. How does that work? Because, you know, sometimes I've, I've, been, uh, I've been there with a testimonial of a mother and she was just struggling with all the um, awful schedule and she didn't know when she can, you know, just pursue the recruitment process. And it was so difficult because sometimes the calls were too late and she had to run to school, she had to cook, she had to do so many things. So yeah, be please uh, really... Um, transparent about your recruitment process. How do we attract women more with real actions and over the long term? Because I think that's something that can give us more insight about beyond the trend of uh, inclusion. Feminize your title of post. I don't know if they... Are, are you French native speaker for some of you? Could you raise your hand? Okay, English native speaker. Okay, Flemish native speaker. Okay, thank you. Um, I am absolutely not Flemish, but I just try to include myself into your country. <laughs> so uh, let's say uh, maybe you do not know, maybe you do know that, but we've got a problem in France actually, uh, because développeur is the masculine form of uh, the job title, but the word développeuse, which is the feminine form, exists. But it's like nobody is using it. So imagine when you are a recruiter and you are looking for a developer in the masculine form on LinkedIn, bless you, <laughs> on LinkedIn, for example, um, you will only um, find male profiles because some women are just empowering themselves by reading, writing developers. So yeah, you can push that and also to let um, women to feel legitimate enough uh, to, um, to um, go to your company. Please feminize your you know, posts and titles. Look for female and non-binary developers at schools and high schools. I don't know if you already done that, but that's a good way to promote tech right now. This is so important. Um, for example, in France, we are struggling with uh, the decreasing of maths and sciences in general, and girls are just not interested because of a law. Um, that's a really bad thing that happened, and it's a serious issue that we will try to uh, move in a positive way with 15 Tech, for example. I will try to do that as sure as I can be. Um, I want all of us, if possible, to go to a school or a high school in order to promote Tech, in order to promote sciences. Girls are just more 
I don't know, let's say, interested by makeup nowadays and TikToks and all those stuff that are not promoting sciences. And this is so gender biased that I think that we can do something significant here. And last but not least, promise something concrete and not hypothetical in your job ad. So if you want to sugarcoat everything, this is absolutely not the good thing. I'm sure that the woman will live in eight months or one year, for example. As a conclusion, I think we will have time to debate a little bit, so that's cool. Um, let's have a look on the social issues. I'm talking about the French uh, idea what's going on here, but I, uh, let's say it's European. For example, 5% of French startups that were funded by all female teams are um, getting only 5%, sorry, of fi French startups uh, founded by f all female teams uh, get funding. Only 5%, that's such a low rate. To compare, one female co founder and one male co founder get three times more funding than women's teams. That's really significant. And for example, when the speech is uh, said by a woman, it's less, it's perceived in a bad way compared with men. By that, talking about the adjectives, um, the men are just bringing more confidence so you can give more funding to a man. I don't know why, but this is totally biased. And women are perceived as more emotional. So that's why they do get less funding. If the woman is racialized or LGBTQI+, she's more likely to migrate to community businesses. So maybe you've seen that on Twitter or maybe on, on several websites or social medias, but you can see that there is a lot of organizations like Lesbians Who, who Code, Black Women in Tech, Black Women Who Codes, Muslim Women in Code, and that's totally normal. If you do not fit in, if you do not um, bond with the center of the will of privileges and power, of course, you will try to do something with marginalized people that just look like you and create another status quo. This is the result, sadly, but for the moment, they're just looking for sisterhood place, Hadelfiti, and of course, safe places where they can express themselves. And that's really important. Another insight, where are women going? One in five women is currently, and mainly at the age of 35 years old, thinking of quitting her job. Probably she will go in another team, in another company, or going to a corollary profession. By saying that, I am talking about product management, product owner, care, all those womanly, good uh, scene, uh, sections and fields. And if she's not thinking about that, she will think about being a freelance. That's my case today. Um, in order to get more freedom and express myself in order to lead the change. And at the final step, uh, she's be thinking about doing our own startup, more feminine and diverse. So what you must remember, because it's all about business, of course, diversity is essential. You will think about um, user cases in a best way. You will think about businesses in a best way, in a better way. Inclusion that's actually is making everything and everyone feel welcome and included over the long term, and that's really good. Diversity and inclusion increases the productivity because you know mind mapping, brainstorming are more diverse, you, so you can go beyond what is trendy. Uh, and overall, the satisfaction of your workplace and workforce will increase. Inclusion in the workplace starts with overcoming prejudice. So if you uh, have been uh, taking a picture of the will of privileges, that's a good way to understand what is your habitus and what are the dynamics um, that are, are going on there. And ensuring diversity and inclusion is a group effort. Please do not feel alone when it comes to leading the change. That's so important. You should seriously um, call for people that are prone to do inclusion stuff with you. Do not feel alone because you will have a mental breakdown or a burnout or whatever in that, uh, that kind of cases. And please, yes, yeah, stop seeing your, only your own privileges. I am too privileges. Um, 
So you've got to go beyond that and go deeper in order to embrace, embrace change. I would like us to think of a woman right now, of your family, of your team, of your surrounding. Think about of all the different layers that I've been talking to you before. How did you help that woman? I hope that thinking about that is just create something in your brain and you can understand that maybe you can be triggered by some stuff uh, and the revolution of women right now on um, a calm way to understand what happened in tech uh, and talking about diversity and role model, I would like us to think about all those forgotten, erased engineers who are our role models. Everybody is talking about Ada Lovelace. She was not the only one. We can do better than that. We can think about Melba, Roy Mouton, for example, Marion Crook and Catherine Johnson, who are working about uh, on the Apollo project in a segregated environment. Imagine how difficult that can be at that time. You can think also of Eddie Lamar. She is the creator of Wi-Fi and nobody has really mentioned it. We can think about Marsha Ray Williams, Grace Hopper, Mary Kenneth Keller, Bad Mercy Warrior, Anita Borg, Susan Carey, Mary Jackson, Dorothy Vaughan, Mother Al Jamea, Kinda Ibrahim, Minghu, and Aisha Bin Bhutti. As you can see, the diversity is here. We have to change the storytelling of it. You have to read more about the work that they've done. That's really important. If you want to promote more diversity and make a better step about inclusion, think of a big picture and a bigger spectrum. And I would like to finish uh, before the debate on this amazing quote of Kimberly Crenshaw, which is, if you see inequality as damn problem or unfortunate problem, that is a problem. So you know what, let's debate. Ask me some question and thank you uh, to you all for listening to me and let's do it all together. So is there some question? We've got eight minutes left, so perfect on time. You, sir. Uh, it's uh, the main reason uh, that I've been told right now of the recent studies are the misogynistic and sexist behaviors in the team. Uh, rely, uh, relying on bro culture is having a serious impact of how women can feel um, in a safe environment to promote their own skills and having a serene future. This is the main reason right now in 2022 with the last studies that I've been reading. I'm sorry. That's yeah, that's really sad. So that's why I, I just tried to do something that is beyond the trendy thing. Understand that the biased uh, behaviors that we all have, sadly, uh, can be changed for the for good. Let's you, sir. Um, honestly, I really get this. Yeah. I really get it, and I feel it too. But I have no real uh, good way of how I explain it to other people. Like why it matters to me that other people that are not like me may in like, uh, you know, in status uh, will be included. Mm -hmm. so how would you explain it? How would you say that it's not only their problem, it's also my problem? I think as humanity in general, what is going on in a random place <laughs> in the world is seriously affecting us. You can see that right now with all the crisis that we are living in, everything has an impact so you can promote that that idea that yeah maybe it's not your problem but you can be concerned by it one day for example i was showing you the will of privileges and you do not see that but i have some disability and i am r having that right now so um, when I did not experience that i didn't feel concerned about this issue but now that i'm living it um, i can tell you that i am more um, prone to understand what is going on about the privileges that I had before. So yeah, the problems of anyone can be your problem. Everything can change in life. Yeah, but how, for example, um, you know, 
because I'll never be a woman. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, specific to me. I mean, I could possibly, but I, w I, I don't think I will. So, um, like, from my perspective, um, I, I just want to have a more diverse uh, mm -hmm. area, but I can't really, it's a little difficult for me to find, like, the source of why it's important to me. You know, I feel it. I feel that I want more women around me. I feel that I want, like, more close to a 50% thing, but, but um, can't really articulate why exactly it's important to me. You know, that's what I mean. Okay. But I think it's personal to you. I think you, maybe you, you experienced something in your life, have you seen something um, that it was a serious inequality, for example, and you've been wondering why nothing has been done. You can talk about your personal experience too. I think so. Another question in the back, sir. Yeah, you. <laughs> I think now the interests are so different by gendered. And as I told it before, the behaviors and the way we can qualify women and men, those words are so powerful that you can have a mental issue about it. You will imagine something that is just like, let's say uh, science is not for women, for example. So you, you will experience that on a daily basis and you will not even think about a career in science. And it's the main issue that we are facing right now. So yeah, the lack of interest is not that um, natural. This is the thing. I mean, if women can do sciences, it means that there is something deeper there. So all the words you're gonna use, all the um, bias you will experience, all the privileges also that I've been showing on the wheel, all those things are having an impact. You're welcome. Sir in the back. Yes, you. Tech is all about geek culture. Geek culture and the geek stereotype is really strong. What about the game boy? Why not the game girl? That, all those words are so powerful. You, you, maybe you cannot perceive how powerful the words are shaping our environment and our society, but there is something interesting by what you're saying. Medical taking care, women. This is womanly scene. This is womanly good you know, for, I mean, it's womanly well seen. So yeah, tech was uh, not part of the woman's journey until um, at the beginning. It's, I think it was about in the um, 40s to 60s or 70s, women were in charge of tech because it was not uh, as, as good seen as, um, um, I mean by that the tasks were not as good. Um, I'm just my broken my English is so broken right now. I'm so sorry. I'm just so <laughs> tired. Um, and then it changes with the personal computer that came into houses, and it was only um, a way to bond with. Uh, I mean, it's, it was a good way to bond uh, as a father with your um, son. So there is a dynamic and a historical dynamic behind that. You can have uh, more insights uh, with studies, but all the geek cultures is about that. What, what happened in 80, uh, 1890s. So strong impact about sociology. You, yes.
Yep. Um, I can bring you that. I do not. I do not have the data, but that that's true. The more the the team is diverse, the better the impact is uh, on the user cases and all those stories. Um, that is having a really strong impact of uh, the products. For example, the last data I've been collecting, not for this conference, but there were um, there was an issue with Maori's people. Uh, from the Pacific Ocean, and they are tattooed on the <laughs> the lowest part of their face. And when they hide their iPhone, uh, the iPhone and the Face ID didn't work. So this is clearly a lack of diversity and how the body, the behaviors can be so different in a cultural way. So that's why, yeah, you're right, more diversity in the team is leading to better products and better understanding of what is the user or what the user can be. So I'm sorry because I don't have the data in mind and I don't want to say something false, but uh, yeah, th there is something there. I don't know if there is another question because the time's up. Uh, I can wait for you at the end or at the back of the room. Is that okay for anyone? Thank you for listening to me. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.